Dennis Technology Labs is an independent testing organisation. We were approached by Kaspersky who asked us to test application control software. Application control technologies are important because they allow a business to be more productive. Essentially, they allow users to use the software they need and they stop them using the software they shouldn't need. So we spent months coming up with a very detailed and new methodology to help really look into these products and find out what they do, how they do it and how easy they are to use. We took a number of security software products uh, that had application control features built into them and we compared how they did in terms of performance and also what kind of features they had because they were not all the same. We felt that application control solutions should achieve at least two main high level goals and those two goals were will they allow just legitimate applications, things that you want your users to run on the network to run and the second thing is will it help defend against advanced persistent threats or targeted attacks. What we wanted to test was can the software achieve these goals? We didn't want to test how good are we at using these products. So with that in mind, we went to all the different vendors involved in the test and we would ask them questions. So if we needed to achieve goal X and there's no box to tick to make it do that, we would ask the question, how do we do this? And treating us like a normal paying customer, they would take us through the technical support necessary to achieve the goal. So you may find they would say, the product is not capable of achieving that. They may say it's very simple, there's just a menu option you need to tick, or there may be some ground in between where there's a bit of work for the customer to do, us, but ultimately the product can achieve the goal. There are two main approaches that application control software tends to use. The most common is default allow, also known as blacklisting. And when the software takes that approach, everything is allowed to run on the network, except the things that we know to be bad or that we specifically don't want for another reason. All those things can be listed and explicitly denied. So it's default allow, everything's allowed to go except the things that we know we don't want. Default deny is a relatively new approach in which everything on the network is stopped by default. It's a default deny policy. Nothing's allowed to run except those things which you explicitly allow something on a whitelist. So whereas default allow is blacklisting, default deny is whitelisting. Now some people are quite suspicious about default deny. They think it will impact very heavily on their business because if you block users from doing useful work, that's harmful. But that's not to say that default deny is inherently wrong. There are just different approaches to how to use it. So for example, if you just block the user with an unhelpful message, that's going to be a bad evening for that person. But if it allows them to make an automatic request to use the software, or possibly they are allowed to use it, but in a more constrained way, then you have a situation where the default deny has restricted an unknown application, but it hasn't actually stopped the user from doing their work. Kaspersky Labs Endpoint Software came top of the four products tested. It did particularly well in two parts of the test. Uh, first of all, it produced really thorough logs. Now these should not be underestimated. Good logs are really important to detect what the users are doing, both in terms of using legitimate software and any threats that have made it onto the network. It was also very good at handling vulnerable applications. So it could, for example, detect vulnerable applications running on the network it could restrict them from doing the things that perhaps they shouldn't be doing. But also more interestingly, it actually allowed them to be updated as well to a more secure position. So you have a situation where an old piece of software is blocked until it becomes updated, the vulnerability is patched and the users can use it safely. Now taking control of vulnerable software is very important because it's often the route that attackers will use to gain a foothold on a network and compromise it stealing data. So it's very good for improving your security posture. So with complex enterprise software, usually there's a way to achieve a goal. This may be a feature in the software that's already available, or it may be that the administrator has to write some code, get some databases involved, extra work. 
So with Kaspersky Lab's product, that was actually the easiest to use. Most of the things we wanted to do, we could do out of the box without any extra work.